All right, so we're going to go over this worksheet together. We'll go over the entire thing together. Um, most of it is conic um, problems, and then there's a little bit of review on, um, I think it's a double angle problem at the end of it. Um, this is highly inspired by what you're going to see on your test on Tuesday. And this is recorded for the benefit of Kendra. Everyone say, hi, Kendra. Hi, Kendra. Hi, Kendra. <laughs> All right, the, we can use our formula sheet while we're testing, which means we should be using our formula sheet right now while we're practicing. This is a circle in the coordinate plane. You're going to be asked to identify the location of the center and the length of the radius, and then you're going to be asked to graph it. So <clears throat> our center is located at HK. Remember, there's built-in negatives here and here. So tell me the location. I heard 4, comma. Negative 3, good. And the length of the radius is the square root of this number, so it is 3. And we're all going to, yeah, well, you say all we have to do is graph it, but you know what happens when I go to graph. No, it's not counting by twos. I made sure it didn't, because yeesh, you know how I hate that. <clears throat> all right, one, two, three. Now, instead of watching me struggle graphing, why don't you graph your own? Oh, messed it up at the end. It was going so strong, too. All right. Anyways, that's my circle. I'm sure yours is lovely. Moving along. We are still talking about circles, but this circle is not in um, uh, standard form. It's in general conic form. So we have to complete the square with the x's and then also with the y's. So completing the square with our x's. x squared plus 2x plus something. <clears throat> And then we're going to complete the square and the y's as well. So plus y squared plus 10y plus something. And then this negative 21, the original constant, just basically needs to get out of the way. So let's add it to the other side. But to keep our equation balanced, whatever we added in that blue blank has to come over here as well. And the green as well. <clears throat> so completing the square, the blanks are always half of your b term and then squared. So half of 2 is 1, 1 squared is 1. And then half of 10 is 5, 5 squared is 25. So our blue trinomial here is now completed, and we can factor it into x plus 1 squared. Plus our green trinomial, same pattern for factorization. This factors into y plus 5 squared. And then if we add that up, was it? 47? Okay. So don't panic. Radii are not always pretty numbers, guys. So don't, it, all it's going to ask you to do is identify the center and radius. So the center <coughs> is located where? At negative 1, negative 5. Good. And the length of the radius is whatever the square root of 47 is. So if I had to graph that, I'd have to do a decimal approximation. But good news, they're not asking me to graph it. It's like they know how poorly I graph. All right, this next, um, these questions... You can see on your test on Tuesday, you're not going to see both of these. You'll see one or the other, depending on, uh, they're not one's harder than the other. You just got to be careful, okay? It's to be determined. The answer is yes and five. <laughs> All right. The center of your circle is at negative 8, 15, so that's H and K. The area is their clue for the formula, so the area of a circle is pi r squared, so that means 15 must be r squared. I think we're done, because the formula for a circle, x minus negative 8 will be x plus 8 squared, and then y minus 15 squared, and then in the formula it's radius squared, so don't bother square rooting the 15, because you're just going to have to square it back again, so just put a 15 there. <clears throat> so very similarly here on number 4, the circumference of a circle, there's a couple different formulas, diameter times pi or 2 pi r, and that one looks like it matches up real nicely. The 2 and pi are not considered anymore, so now I can see that the radius is square root of 5. <clears throat> All right, let's rock and roll. X minus 3 squared. Hey, guys, I know this sounds really picky, but I keep having kids write another x quantity here, like the x plus 16. That's not correct, so put a y. <laughs> I mean, it's an easy thing to do, but all right, in the formula, if I took this radius and I squared it, you would just get a 5. <clears throat> so like I said, neither one is more difficult than the other. Um, you just have to be careful whether I give you area or circumference. 
It is one or the other. You keep asking him to put both on there. Alright, so this question, this is the first time we encounter a problem that, while it does resemble what we've done in homework, I feel like it's more difficult than what we've done in homework because of what's going to happen with the size of P. So the first thing I run into, and not that you guys can't handle this, but the formula is backwards from your formula sheet. Can you tell that? The quantity that's squared is usually on the other side, so if that's what's bothering you, just turn it around. <clears throat> and this is a parabola where you're going to be asked to graph and identify a bunch of important components. So the first thing I identify is where the vertex is located, which is always at h comma k, which is always the x value comma the y value. So h is negative 5, and k is negative 3. So I'm going to plot that, maybe. There you go. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, this is the... This is the part of the problem that I'm not too happy about. This thing right here is supposed to be what from your formula sheet? Uh, it's not P, it's 4P. So 1 half is 4P. P is the distance that I'm going to be plotting at how far I have to stay at. It's 1 eighth. Gross. So if you'd rather think about this as a decimal, this is a fairly decent decimal. It's 0.125. <laughs> Say it again. It doesn't line up. Like you already graphed it. Maybe you graphed it wrong then. Because you're right, the graph and what we're looking at should make sense. Um, so what we have to decide though, guys, is what kind of a parabola are we looking at? If the y term is what's squared, we have a horizontal parabola, um, which means a positive p-value means it's, it's going to look like this. So when I go to find the focus point, I don't mind if you guys stick with the formula. You just have to make sure you're using the correct formula. So the focus point for a horizontal parabola is at h plus p comma k. <clears throat> so for us, that would be, where's h? Negative 5, <laughs> gross, plus 1 eighth comma negative 3. Now, I'm just going to do a decimal. Yeah. And yes, I'll accept that. Negative 4.875, comma, negative 3. Which, that's going to be really stinking hard to graph, guys, because it's like just past the vertex. It's going to be really gross like that on your test, too. So, basically, I'm just going to squint my eyes and look at your graph and make sure it slightly resembles what it's supposed to. And then I'm over here on the side where you find all the things, like vertex, focus point, directrix. I'm going to check that in great detail. And I'm going to make sure that your graph somewhat resembles what it's supposed to look like. Because your numbers, the whole thing. Just just close my eyes and write fives. That's, that's one way to grade. Is that why you keep shouting fives? Self-fulfilling prophecy? You just go home and chant five. Five. Oh, you're so such business today. All right, what we got here? So you're trying to find the directrix. So the directrix, <coughs> excuse me, it, for a horizontal parabola is at h minus p. Um, so decimal, all right, that's the wrong formula, guys. Yeah. X equals, x equals h minus p. <coughs> so negative 5 minus 1 eighth. I'm going to graph negative 5.125 because... I don't, fractions don't really interest me when I'm graphing points or lines, so, unless it's slope. <clears throat> so I'm going to be graphing the directrix of x equals negative 5.125. That would be negative 5 minus 1 eighth. All right. And again, um, that's going to be a little difficult to graph. Because <laughs> it's like just past the <laughs> vertex on the other side. So this is the next part that really messed with you guys before. We, ha we do need one good point. Just one. And after that we can use symmetry to graph the rest of it. So <clears throat> the directrix is this. The axis of symmetry. Is that what you were trying to ask me about? Yeah. The axis of symmetry is the line that goes straight through the vertex and the focus. So that would be a horizontal line of y equals 3. Negative 3, excuse me. <clears throat> 
So we got the directrix, we have the axis of symmetry, we have the focus point, we have the vertex. Those are the four things I'm going to make you off to the side fill out. And then in theory, you're supposed to graph all that, but yeah. We do need a point. <clears throat> oh, just graph it. You'll be fine. There will be some like this on With a really tiny p-value, yeah. And I don't, I don't know if that was the original intention, but... I didn't feel like I had the power to change it, so it didn't happen, so we're just going with it. <clears throat> no. Um, I'm going to rearrange this formula a little bit, though, guys. I'm going to solve for x, um, which means <clears throat> I can multiply by 2 over yonder and then subtract 5. So that would be 2 times y plus 3 squared and then we subtracted the 5 over. So that's the same equation, just rearranged. The reason I want it rearranged is because now I could come up with at least one decent ordered pair on this parabola. Um, but it's weird because you're you're choosing y values. So give me a, a number for y that you wouldn't mind adding 3, squaring, and then multiplying by 2, and then subtracting 5. 1. Sounds fun. But 1's kind of large. Well, I mean, whatever. How about negative 1? <laughs> Sorry. Sorry to ignore your advice. I'm sorry. Negative 1 plus 3 is dos. Dos squared is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 minus, three, eight minus 5 is 3. So a good point to plot would be 3, negative 1. Now, look at the symmetry line, guys. Just plop down two more points beyond the axis of symmetry, and you have another part of the parabola you can graph. And yes, this is an extremely skinny, narrow parabola. These are very difficult to plot when they're narrow like that. Now, if I took Max's advice and, and used y equals 1, um, we would have been plotting a very large and in charge value that would have been off my paper. Um, 4 squared, 16, 32 minus 5. Third, yeah, no. So, no thank you, I say to that. <clears throat> um, guys, the idea is when you're choosing a y value, look where your vertex is, and then don't stray too far away from that vertex. So, like, something in this area for y's. <laughs> All right, <clears throat> moving along. So that's, that's as difficult as it's going to get, just the fact that the p-value is very small. Um, this one, <coughs> it says complete the square to write in conic form. Clearly, this is going to be a parabola, because this is our old school parabola formula. But they want you to write it in the conic formula version. So this is the formula we have to get. Whoops, not that. <clears throat> we need to rewrite it so it looks like this. Transformational form, they call it. But that's the form that you're trying to get it into. So we are going to complete the square on the x's. There's no square to complete on the y's but we still have to think about how we complete squares and equations. <clears throat> so, check out these x's here. We're not going to be able to complete the square when there's a coefficient of negative 2. So the first thing I'm going to have to do is factor out a negative 2. So this becomes x squared minus 8x, and we will complete the square. Close that parenthesis. <clears throat> this 31, negative 31, is not part of that quadratic, so we're going to shuffle him over here. So that's now a positive 31, y plus 31, yep. But remember, we're completing the square over here on the right, so we have to kind of complete the square over here on the left as well, or add that blue blank, I should say. Okay, talking about that blank, what goes in that blank in this parentheses set here? Half of this squared is 16, but this isn't really a 16. What is it? It's really a negative 32. So this blank here, right here, is actually a negative 32. <coughs> So we have negative 32 plus y plus 31, better known as y minus 1, <clears throat> equals negative 2, and then x minus 4 squared, which you feel like you're home free, right? But we're not, because <laughs> transformational form, this squared term is supposed to be isolated. <clears throat> oh, there it goes. <clears throat> we need to divide by negative 2, in other words, multiply by 1 half, negative 1 half, hello. So multiplying this side by negative one-half, we get negative one-half. Y minus one, leave it in transformational form. 
equals x minus 4 squared. I have no problem with you leaving it just like that. According to our formula sheet, that's backwards. But I don't care. Oh, but now they want things. Oh, for Pete's sake. We're not done, guys. We need to find all the things now. <clears throat> all right, we need vertex. We need focus. It is a vertical parabola, um, and we need the directrix. So for a vertical parabola, uh-huh, what? I messed up. The transformational form that we use is this. No, because the other one's a horizontal parabola. The 4p term should be in front of the non-squared variable. Yeah. Good question. All right, so the vertex is, that's an easy location. Vertex is at, where are we at? <laughs> 4, 1. This is a vertical parabola, so the formula for finding a focus point is at h, comma, k plus p. We haven't actually figured out what p is yet. But in true computer form, it's the most disgusting thing we could come up with. Ready? 4p <laughs> is negative 1 half, which means p is negative 1 eighth. All right. Or negative 0.125, yes. And for me, well, I realize it's easier to write down a fraction, guys, so if you really want to just hit math enter enter on your cap, you know, on your calculator when you're doing this problem, that's fine. My answer key has both versions, so it's not like it's a pain in my rear end to integrate it. But like if you're graphing it, I don't really know if like 61 eighths makes any sense to anybody. So just keep that in mind. If you're just giving an answer, fine, fraction. If you're graphing it, you might want to think about decimal. <clears throat> Anyways, what we got here? Um, 4 comma, where's K? Um, 1, oh, 1 plus negative 0. 0. 0.125? So point, one of those, 0. 0.875? Okay. <laughs> Final answer. Yep. You could, of course, change that to a fraction if you'd prefer. And the directrix, the formula for directrix on a vertical parabola is y equals k minus p. So this time we have... 1 minus negative 1 eighth. So I heard that's y equals 1.125 or the fraction equivalent. <clears throat> Whew, that was fun. I can't wait to grade this. Let me tell you. Could you all just get them right? Yeah, that'd be great. No, just get them right. All right, um, this is another set of questions where on your test you're going to see one or the other and no I'm not telling you which you have to be prepared for both okay so I this is a typo conical is not a thing it's conic um and the vertex is given to you and then a focus point is given to you so what I usually do first is I give myself a very horrible sketch of what's happening just so I know which formula I should be concentrating on which it's not going to be too difficult for you guys to figure out. Do you see how the y value doesn't change? So that tells you which formula you should, you should be using. But like for me, I get really stressed out on, no, on directional things. So I have to just graph it. Um, two negative twos, you know, right here, whatever. Can you guys change 23 over 12 to a decimal for me? It's one point something close to two. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> this was at 2, negative 2, and then the focus point is not quite as far, so it's going, it's right here. So we're going to have one of these parabolas, a sideways parabola. Can you tell me something about the p-value, though? It's going to be negative. It's also going to be super tiny, so this will be fun. All right. Um, the formula that we're going to be using because of the direction that it's opening is the horizontal formula of y minus k squared equals 4p times x minus h. And we already know two of the things. We know h and k. A, um, where are we at? k is negative 2 and h is 2. So I think if we do a little bit of calculation, you guys can tell me how large the distance of p is. Now if you if you want, if you want to use the formula, you sure can, right? Because there's a direct formula relationship between these two numbers. 
Um, the focus. Hello. It is. Yes, that's the one I'm talking about. Nothing's working. Okay. This guy right here, 23 twelfths, is H plus P, but we know H. What is H? Two. It's two. <laughs> so your job is to solve for P. Subtract two from both sides. So 23 twelfths minus two is negative. Can you, go ahead and give me a fraction. Negative one twelfth? Because this is 24 twelfths. Subtract it. Now, that's wonderful news. We know the p-value. The problem is I don't really want the p-value. I want 4 times the p-value. So that's what I need to put into the formula right here. So what I usually do next is I write down 4p equals this number, and that's what goes in the formula. So what is negative 1 twelfth times 4? Negative 1 third. That's what goes right here. So ready to rock and roll, guys. It is y minus negative 2 is y plus 2 squared equals this thing is what goes in front, negative one third, and then x minus two. Gross. It's not bad, but you see what I'm saying? Like we don't, on our homework, the, the distance, the p-value was fairly nice in most of our problems. And I didn't, like I said, I didn't want your test to be the first time where you were like, oh, snap. You can have. All right, this next one is similar in nature, but they give you a different clue. This time they tell you the directrix. So, um, again, I require a sketch for myself to get going so I know which kind of parabola I'm looking at. So negative 8, um, negative 6 is like right here. And then the directrix is a horizontal line of y equals negative 49 over 8. Can someone convert that to a decimal for me? Okay, so that is below this guy. So if I think about what kind of a parabola I have, this is the vertex and this is the directrix, so it's one of these. So we have a vertical parabola. So the formula we're going to be plugging things into is this guy, x minus h squared plus 4, it equals, excuse me, 4p times uh, y minus k. And we already know h and k. So that's negative 8 and that's negative 6. And then this clue, you can probably already tell me the, the p-value distance. If it was at negative 6 and now it's at negative 6.125. It's 0.125 and we know it's positive if you didn't want to think about signage because it's opening upwards. But if you want to use the formula, you sure can. You can say negative 49 eighths is... Um, k, so negative 6, minus p. And then you'd have to solve for p, so you have to sub, uh, add 6 and then divide by negative 1, and you'd find out that p is, what did we just say, 0.125, so 1 eighth. But we don't actually want to put p into the formula, we want 4 times p. So what is 4 times p? 1 half, yep. So the, the thing that goes in the formula is 1 half. That, that'd be this guy right here. All right, so final answer. This is really messy. X plus 8 squared equals 1 half um, Y plus 6. Yuck. All right, spit on my computer. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> um, <laughs> again, just the fact that p is a fraction is what makes the math a little extra fun. So be prepared to work with fractions on your, on your test. That's a good circle question, but it's not so outright where it just tells you the information you need. I'm going to give you the endpoints of the diameter. So we got to go back into our geo brain. Remember our first summative and we made you guys do a bunch of mis uh, distance and midpoint questions? It's for this moment right here. The midpoint of your diameter will be your center. So the midpoint would be the average of the x's and the average of the y's. So your center is at, let's see, 2 over 2 is 1, comma, uh, negative 14 over 2 is negative 7. So there's your h and k. The other thing you're going to need is the length of the radius. There's multiple ways you can find it. Um, what I usually do is I find the distance between the center and one of the endpoints. Now, I'm 
If I if I've already messed up on the center, I'm gonna get the question wrong regardless. But if this was like an SAT question, I might consider like triple checking that I haven't messed up yet. <laughs> Um, but we can go ahead and find the radius because it's just going to be the distance between, pick your favorite point, I'm going to go with this one, the distance from 1 to negative 4 is 5 units, and then the distance from negative 7 to negative 6 is 1 unit, so that's the square root of 26. So I just went from center to endpoint. If you went diameter endpoints, you just found the diameter, cool, cut it in half. It's funky probably, so good luck. Um, but we're still not done because now I have to go and put all the information into my formula. So x minus 1 squared. This is a circle, so y plus 7 squared. And then radius squared. Go back and square that radical and you get 26. Funky. Alright, what else we got? Oh, sorry, I went a little faster. <coughs> Um, this next one, we're going to write an equation of a parabola. Sounds fun. <laughs> Alright, it opens up or down. That's for you to determine. And we could determine it pretty quickly if we actually plot these points. But I'm not, I'm not so worried about that because we're going to use a formula. Um, a vertical parabola would be using this formula. x minus h squared equals 4p times y minus k. And we know h and k h is negative 3, and k is 10. The only thing that we really need to find is whatever this thing is. So the other clue they gave you is an xy ordered pair. So I think the best way to do this question is to plug in negative 6 for x and 4 for y, and then just leave this thing as like a gigantic variable. Call it whatever you want. Just put a box around it and leave it alone and solve for that box. So right here, if I do x, which is negative 6, minus a negative 3, that would be plus 3, don't forget to square it, equals whatever this thing is, times y, which is 4, minus k, which is 10. All right, y'all, let's see. That's negative 3 squared, so that's a 9, equals mystery thing times negative 6, and then if I divide both sides by negative 6, fraction please, what's this box? It's negative 3 halves. So when they want the equation, like there's no point in going and solving for p specifically, because I'm not graphing it, they just want 4p, because that's what you're going to put in place of the formula. So our formula is now x plus 3 squared equals this thing, negative 3 halves, times y minus 10. Blah. No, because what? In, every time I do this question, because I get so like in a rut, like I solve for p, and then I got to go back and multiply it by 4, and then I'm like, well, that was dumb, because to get p, I had to divide by 4, and then I went back and multiplied by 4 like a second and a half later. So eventually I got smart, and I said, put a box around that thing, solve for that. That's a very fancy way of thinking about it. I know, I do it every time, too. It took me, I, I recorded all your lessons, like, early. And after, like, the third time of doing it, I was like, Abruzzo, fix it. All right. This is not conics. Um, but this is a good review. So what quadrant are we in? What? Child? Yes. This is 3 pi over 2. And this is 2 pi. So we're in quadrant four. And I'm going to draw a ridiculously arbitrary triangle because I can hardly draw a triangle as it is, much less one to scale. And it says the cosine is 2 squared to 13 over 13. Now, you can go ahead and label the legs as 2 squared to 13 and 13, but can you guys think with me here? Isn't this the ratio before they rationalize? So that would make my life easier if I just call it that. So cosine would be x value over r, and then a little Pythagorean theorem, because we're going to need the sine in a minute. Well, we don't need it, but it's a good habit to find it because of what the other... You might have different sorts of questions on your test, right? Instead of cosine 2 theta, I could ask for sine 2 theta. 
Um, yep, you're going to need to do square root of 13 squared equals 2 squared, whoops, plus y squared, and then, so 13 minus 4 squared to 9 is 3, yep. Now, is it just 3? It's moving downwards. It's negative 3. So I'm supposed to find cosine of double theta. So I choose my favorite cosine double theta formula. I don't know which one that is on your sheet. I like the first one. I love this one. Cosine squared minus sine squared. So where it says cosine 2 theta, there's three different ones on your formula sheet. This is the first one that's listed. So cosine of that triangle would be, what did we say, 2 over square root of 13 minus sine of that triangle would be doo -doo -doo -doo, negative 3 over square root of 13. And remember, we're squaring both of these. So this becomes 4 thirteenths minus 9 thirteenths, which comes out to negative 5 thirteenths. There we go. Okay. Yay, us. Go us. Very good. There is a 5 in that answer. Look at you. All right. Bye, Kendra. Bye, Kendra. Good luck, Kendra. Everyone say good luck, Kendra. Good luck. Except she probably already did her show, so hope you did well. Yeah.